first paragraph we have just got to know that he had a problematic childhood right he was going through illnesses he was plagued by ill health he had a nervous breakdown because uh, his wife had a nervous breakdown because he had just lost a son and a daughter and what not there were many problems and as far as uh, political uh, upheavals are concerned the facades the problems the chaos is of a romantic period we have already talked about it at length that politically everything was changing everybody was you know uh, making everything into a materialistic commodity they wanted to own everything they wanted to be in the game they wanted to have these uh, uh, technological <coughs> advancements they wanted to have the upper hand so this divide between the class system based on many factors such as religion uh your caste your creed your status your financial status uh your health your looks everything was being counted therefore these romantics they revolted against it therefore they wanted to talk about themselves and not about these materialistic things so ye sara contrast throughout thick and thin jo aapko isme milega and failure of political hopes if we talk about shelley he was a political man he was radicalized he wrote a lot of essays he was not just a poet he was an essayist he was a prose writer and he has written many pamphlets who um, which are actually based in his radicalized ideas regarding politics all he believed in that the political laws or all the rules and regulations should be accessible to the common man and should be written for the common man he did not want that distance between the royal blooded people and it so happens that these people in politics they uh, you know pass some kind of a tender or some kind of a uh notices there and the people who are involved they are not even asked whether they want it or not this is the case of minorities in pakistan we uh, our parliaments our political uh, agendas they declare some kind of law or regulation for these minorities without even asking them whether they want this uh, revolutionized or not whether they would accept this reform or not so similarly this was happening with the peasant people the people of no importance no money no background they were treated as if they can be replaced or changed or what not they were being very uh, we can say that they were being neglected or cornered from all perspectives they were not being taken for uh, they were taken for granted so he wanted to write against it and he has written many pamphlets regarding it aage dekhiye where was the poet to gain and apart from this his personal uh, problems he was also being criticized for not being an extraordinary romantic poet and he was struggling with his poetry because of his loss he lost his son and he was ill himself jab aap theek nahi hote hain emotionally and physically problems create hote hain where was the poet to gain his inspiration for this particular work shelley found his answer literally blowing in the wind specifically the wind that makes the end of summer and the ushers in autumn and the rainy season at the poem as the poem makes clear the west wind is destructive is a destructive force driving off a remaining leaves darkening the sky with territorial rains but it is ultimately beneficial and important part of nature's regenerative cycle now nature has a cycle like uh, right now we talked about in uh, kubla khan about how there is a process of gardening we actually see the seed and then it turns into a sprout and then it turns into a tree and then that uh, tree turns into a fruitful tree and etc a process hota hai similarly uh, winds they also grow through uh, go through a uh, process theek hai winds just डायरेक्शन uh, में चलती हैं दे टेल एस अलॉट ऑफ थिंग्स यहाँ पर ये सिम्बॉलिक है डिस्ट्रक्शन की वेस्ट विंड इज फोर्सफुल एंड इट इज डिस्ट्रक्टिव नाउ इट विल डिस्ट्रक्ट वन थिंग एंड देन वंस इट इज गॉन न्यू थिंग्स विल सब प्राउड रीजनरेशन रीबर्थ विल टेक प्लेस दैट इज वॉट ही इज टॉकिंग अबाउट सो दिस इज द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द पोएम ओवर हेयर एंड इट teach is a lesson as life is resurrected from death revolution arises from stagnation and creative power is revived from artistic sterility so this is what he says that if you want to become an artistic poet you have to be uh, taking a, a deep look into your own soul your own artistic sterility sterilize up tab hote hain jab aap pure ho jate hain जो जानवर होते हैं स्पेशली इनको स्टरलाइज किया जाता है इन्हें न्यूटर एंड स्प्रे किया जाता है सो दैट दे डू नॉट मार्क देयर टेरिटरीज एंड दे डू नॉट शो एनी एग्रेशन दे बिकम प्योर दिस इज व्हाट ही सेइंग ओवर हियर के वंस यू आर रेजरेक्टेड फ्रॉम डेथ 
दैट इज द कंपेरिजन बिटवीन लाइफ एंड डेथ एक दफ़ा एक सिविलाइजेशन पूरी तरह ख़त्म होती है और फिर आप दोबारा आते हैं जैसे हम ये नहीं कहते वो आपने आजकल एक मीम देखी है और एक न्यूज़ भी है कि सिद्धे मूसो वाला के घर जो है देर वॉज देर इज़ अनदर री जनरेशन री जनरेशन तो नहीं बर्थ ऑफ अ न्यू चाइल्ड बट दे आर कॉलिंग इट अ न्यू कॉलिंग यानी वो उसी की कह रहे हैं कि रेजरेक्टेड हो गया है तो दैट इज़ वॉट दे आर सेंग कि वन एरा हैज़ पास्ट जो उस लड़के का था जिसकी डेथ हो गई और अब उसका जो भाई है या जो बहन है जो भी बच्चा है ही विल कैरी फॉरवर्ड द सेम लेगेसी सो दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द सेम री जनरेशन ओवर हेयर आगे देखें द होल पोएम इज़ अ सिंगल सस्टेन अपोस्ट्रफी एंड एड्रेस टू द विंड इट सेल्फ अगेन द पोइट इज़ बींग कॉन्वर्सेशनलिस्ट एंड ही इज गोइंग टू एड्रेस द wind time in again in the entire poem the first three stanzas are devoted to a formal invocation the wind is characterized and praised for its effects on earth sky and sea humanity only enters the pictures in stanza fourth in which the speaker begins what he calls a prayer so before the fourth stanza all the phenomena are going to be naturalistic automatic something that happens within itself and no interference of humans would be there but in the fourth stanza we have this uh, mention of prayer in line 52 to the wind asking to be mastered by it in stanza 5 the speaker increases his demands he moves from wanting to be struck by the wind force to desiring to be the wind's force itself he doesn't want to be struck by it or uh, changed by it it wants the speaker wants to be one with the wind like uh, wordsworth he wanted to be one with the forest and the natural phenomena for coleridge it was the imagination he wanted to co-join reality and his iman imagination into one here shelley wants to be one with this wind this forceful wind and he doesn't want to be apart from it okay so this is the introduction to your poem that is o to the west wind now let's talk about author's biography <laughs> The eldest son of Sir Timothy and Elizabeth Shelley, landed aristocrat, uh, living in Horsham, Sussex. Shelley was born on etc. First attending Sion House Academy for two years. Shelley entered Eton College. Yes. G. Mary Shelley. Mary Shelley is okay. Shelley. Um, Percy Bysshe Shelley is a male. Just remember that. Okay. इसको Percy Shelley भी कहते हैं. Shelley भी कहते हैं. There are many pronunciations available. आपने इसको शैले के नाम से याद रखना पसी शैले ठीक है पी बी शैले है ना पसी शैले परसी बशे शैले बस बसे भी कहते हैं बशे भी कहते हैं यू विल फाइंड अ लॉर्ड ऑफ प्रोनाउंसिएशन अच्छा हिज आइडियो सेंट्रिक सेंसिटिव नेचर एंड रिफ्यूजल टू कन्फर्म टू ट्रडिशन कंपाउंडेड him with his hobby of performing scientific experiment earned him the name of mad shelley so he experimented not only with the poetry but he also experimented with real life experiments of science and he was called a mad shelley as well now this is one name that is given to him because he was sensitive and he refused to conform to the societal norms and the traditional norms that follow the followed path he did not want to follow blindly he wanted to find his own path so we can also call him a kind of a rebel who did not conform to the conformities of the that era during his years as a student he pursued a wide range of interest he experimented his in physical science studied medicine and philosophy and wrote novels and poetry so he's a novelist he's a poetry writer and he's a prose writer as well essay writer as well by the time he entered oxford he had already published a vividly or widely impro uh, improbable gothic novel zastories written in large part of another saint everin 1811 and co-authored two collections of verse original poetry by victor and scissors written with his sister continued in gothic mode while posthumous fragments of margaret nicholson co-authored with his friend so all these works were co-authored so he was getting his footing into the world of writing aage dekhe um okay jo iska friend hai thomas jefferson hogg he wrote a, a book with him as as well and it was based on erotic poetry that distinguished as the ravings of mad washer woman who had attempted to stab king george the third erotic poetry jo hoti hai that is more into the sexual representation of your sexual de uh, desires yes. so this turmoil has been depicted in this work which is called posthumous fragments of margaret 
Nicholson, right? In his second term at Oxford, Shelley turned to philosophical concern with his the necessity of atheism. Now he comes to his main point, where he challenges the religious points. Before them, before romantics, the religion was a commodity. I'm going to call com uh, religion and patriotism as commodities. You can disagree with me, but to me, in that era, in England, it was a commodity. People with power and money, they would use these triggering points in order to uh, engage people into doing things that they would otherwise never do. For example, hubbul uh, watni or religious uh, religion ki taraf hona aap black and white ho jate you forget to think about the middle way a black and white ko sochte ho gray area ko bilkul chhod dete ho so that madness was not okay by shelley and he wrote a philosophical pamphlet which is called the necessity of atheism in which he challenged and gave proof that there is a something fishy about the existence of God. Teaming up with Hogg, he published the tract, distributed it into the conservative clergymen and dons of Oxford, and challenged them to a debate. He pr provided some proof, some, some kind of philosophical argumentation, and then he uh, asked for a feud, or let's talk it out, let's have a debate on it. Instead, Shelley and Hogg was immediately expelled in March of 1811, an event that estranged Shelley from his family. So he was expelled from his university at Oxford because he challenged the theological or religious perspectives. Undertreated by the fact that he had no financial support until he came of age, in 1811 he eloped to Scotland with Harriet Westbrook, a 16-year-old schoolmate of his sister's. For these three years, they moved around England avoid creditors at the same time they became actively involved in political and social reform in Ireland and Wales writing radical pamphlets in which Shelley set forth his views on liberty equality and justice he and Harriet enthusiastically distributed these tracts among the working classes but with little effect so they were radicalized and they were talking about these political upheavals and chaoses all together as husband and wife and they eloped they did not get married and they were on the watch they wanted uh, they were supposed to be captured but they escaped the capturing altogether the year 1814 was a pivotal one in Shelley's personal life despite their faltering marriage he remarried Harriet in England in to ensure that it was legitimized and legal marriage so that their children would not uh, face any legitimacy issues unfortunately for Harriet Shelley became a frequent guest of the radical English philosopher William Godwin, whose book Political Justice greatly influenced his pol Shelley's political ideas. Shelley fell in love with Mary Godwin's 16-year-old uh, daughter of Godwin and his first wife, the feminist author Mary, and they eloped to classes uh, on July 27th. Upon Shelley's return to England, he entered into a financial agreement with his family that ensured him a regular income. When Harriet declined to join his household as a sister, he provided for her and their two children but continued to live with. Now, this is the juicy stuff that uh, Shelley had juicy stuff ka matlab hai kya hota hai? No, lovely ye bhi nahi pata. <laughs> juicy stuff is something that is controversial that is of interest to common people they enjoy oh, these extramarital affairs and wrong doings of people hame bada enjoyment hota hai wo jo aapka ek jo drama tha jisme pura pakistan pagal ho gaya tha mere paas tum ho so that was the juicy stuff for the people so this uh, as for shelley's concern he married first time he eloped eloped karna hota hai bhag jana yes theek hai Second time he eloped, or dono time 16 years ke saath, do bachiyo ke saath he ran off, right? Then he got some kind of financial support from his family, and he, he had the audacity to ask his first wife to join his household as a sister. sister. Because you could not have two wives at the same time, okay? So, he Mary to keep Harriet, right? But he had the support, he did it. In the summer of 1860, while traveling in Europe, Shelley met Lord Byron and developed an enduring friendship that proved an important influence on the works of both men. Shortly after Shelley's return to England that fall, Harriet drowned himself in Hyde Park. So Harriet committed suicide. She was lonely, she was depressed. Shelley took advantage of this situation and legalized his relationship with Mary on December 30. The moment first wife died, he married the second one in order to make it legal. 
नहीं इसमें बदगुमानी क्या दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ लाइफ दिस कीप्स हैपनिंग हम किसी को इसके पर्सनल लाइफ या इस चीज़ों पर हम नहीं जज कर सकते हम पोइट्री पढ़ें ऑल द यू आर इन टाइटल टू हैव एन ओपिनियन बट इट शुड शुड एन रियली बॉदर यू यू आर नॉट डूइंग इट इट इज ही हु डेड इट ही इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल एंड वी आर जस्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट इट राइट इज जस्ट दैट यू कैन स्टॉप योर सेल्फ फ्रॉम डूइंग सच थिंग्स राइट दैट्स इम्पॉर्टेंट ही सॉट कस्टडी ऑफ हिज चिल्ड्रेन बट ही वॉज क्रिपल्ड इन टू अ लेंथी लॉस सूट एंड ही लॉस दैम देन आगे देखें शेली एंड बायरन हु वॉज लिव इन हु वॉज ऑल्सो लिव इन इन इटली बिकेम द न्यूक्लियस ऑफ अ सर्कल एक्स पेट्रियॉट राइटर्स दैट बिकेम नोन एज सेटेनिक स्कूल बिकॉज ऑफ द डेफाइंस ऑफ इंग्लिश सोशल एंड रिलीजियस कन्वेंशन एंड प्रमोशन ऑफ रिटिकल आइडियाज सो विद बायरन एन अदर पोइट दैट वी आर सपोज टू रीड they started writing in such a manner that they were banished they were not accepted but they were called the satanic people satanic is from satan satan is the belzebub belzebub is the uh, the demons of apna uh, kya kehte hain demons of hell ya aap usko lucifer ke demons bhi keh sakte hain यानी शैतान के साथ ही कह सकते हैं आप उनको राइट ठीक है तो इनको शैतान कहने जाना शुरू कर दिया डू यू नो अबाउट सलमान राशिदी ये जो नाम है Right. He is into the controversy of the same thing. He has written a work which is called Satanic Verses, and he is criticized widely for it. ठीक है आगे देखें. Salman Rushdie. Rushdie, Rushdie. देखें names को आप किसी तरह भी pronounce कर सकते हैं. Shelley was generally content in July, uh, Italy on July eight, eighteen twenty two. Shelley and his um, companion edward williams set sail from italy but their boat capsized in a sequel uh, of the coast let us see 10 days later their bodies washed ashore shelley's body identified by an open volume of john keats poems found in his book pocket was cremated on the beach in a ceremony conducted by his friends byron lee hunt and edward john his ashes were buried near keats grave in the protestant uh, cemetery in rome so this tells us that keats byron shelley all of them they were friends with each other it is almost as if from this class five of you start writing poetry and you call it islamic university poetry and eventually it becomes something of importance it can be that you can be that group from islamic university who publishes on a uh, monthly basis right सो वो इस तरह से उनका एक ग्रुप बना और ये सारा बोलो नाउ यू हैव द बैकग्राउंड नॉलेज ऑफ द इंटायर पोएम एंड यू नो वट हैपन टू शेल एंड वट काइंड ऑफ अ पर्सन ही मीन्स सो हाउ वुड यू कैटेगराइज हिम वॉज ही अ गुड पर्सन और अ बैड वन हिज डिसीजन वॉर कॉन्ट्रोवर्शियल ही वॉज कन्फ्लिक्टेड देर इज नो डाउट एवरीबडी इन रोमेंटिक एरा इन एनी एरा एवरीबडी इज कॉन्फ्लिक्टेड आर एंड यू कन्फ्लिक्टेड अबाउट योर ओन पोलिटिकल एजेंडाज राइट नाउ definitely uh, are you into politics pakistani politics yes now the baby see uh, by uh, shelley wanted to keep mary because mary was into politics now you won't find a shelley because you are not into politics that right? you will find somebody you will find somebody like henry henry capson who wants to have a doll to himself who doesn't want to have a mind to himself do you have a mind of your own yes <laughs> yes So can you uh, contribute in the political propagandas around us right now? No ma'am. No ma'am. No. Papers ke liye. See that's that is the tragedy with us. Anyway, koi baat nahi. Anyway. So this is the introduction to Shelley.